me share with you uh, uh, something about my Kokoda experience, and that is that my line as I prepared for Kokoda, you know, with a 13-year-old uh, a son who, who did no training, uh, but with someone who was slightly older who had to do lots of it, was that my motivation was that if Joe Hockey could do it, so could I. <laughs> but as someone who believes uh, in incentives, in carrots as well as sticks, I have to say that it helped that uh, in my trekking group uh, was Carolyn Pemberton, Miss World Australia from the previous year. So uh, if we needed incentive from time to time, we got it. So uh, uh, look, it is terrific to be here with you today. And it's important to remind ourselves that we stand almost on the eve of a decade celebration of what were described as the world's greatest games. A time when this city came together like no other time in its history, probably, since 1788. An event that was spawned in the midst of the recession that we had to have by a Premier who appointed a committee of sceptics, uh, but who came back and said Sydney can aim to be number one in the world. Sydney can aim to have the games. Sydney can aim to have the eyes and attention of the world. And for me, the past 10 years in particular, since those great days of September 2000, it simply brought home the cost of complacency. The failure to capitalise on the investment that we as a people, we as a state, we as a city made in those Olympic Games and to use that as the bridge to take us into, uh, into the century that was then dawning. And for me, and for you I know, we understand that what was missing post the 2000 Olympics was an understanding of the importance of growth to this economy. And I say this time and time again, I'm not going to apologise for it, but whether your interest is in better delivering to people who suffer from disabilities, whether your interest is improving um, education to Aboriginal communities, or whether your interests are the great economic interests of transport, to, of, uh, uh, of health, uh, of, of business generally, none of it can be done without a solid bottom line. And despite the fact that for much of the past 15 years, indeed except for the last three years, we had rivers of gold in income coming into this state, rivers of gold of revenue over and above what was expected each year, driven largely by the property sector, but still we have too little to show for it. Too little invested in economic infrastructure to grow our state, too little invested to uh, in making our state more competitive a place to do business, uh, too little invested uh, in securing the future of that 13-year-old uh, boy who walked Dakota with me, and hopefully his children as well. So I welcome uh, your report. I'm happy to uh, consider uh, any of the, uh, the big ideas that anyone wants to present to myself or my team. As I said a week ago, the other measure of... Uh, of our state's failure in recent times is that over the past 15 years uh, we've basically come last in the league table of uh, performance on uh, gross state product, growth of gross state product. Queensland leads the, the pack, as you'd expect a resource rich state to lead, with a 90% figure. Uh, we come in at 46% below Tasmania. And, you know, I've said before, the state of origin I'm interested in is not competing with other Australian states. It's about competing within our region of our world and competing uh, successfully. The Business Chamber and the New South Wales Liberals and Nationals will, of course, at times, have different views on differing issues. But on the objective and the approach of growing the state's economy, uh, there won't be anything, uh, there'll be no daylight between us. Uh, we acknowledge, we acknowledge during tough times of the global financial crisis, the importance of government standing beside business to protect the jobs that people rely upon. It's why we advocated a 12 months, 15% cut in payroll tax, because we understood we needed to provide incentives for business to hire, not fire people, uh, in such a time. And it was in stark contrast to our state government. Probably the only state government in the world that you can find that at the time of that global financial crisis delivered a mini budget that actually raised taxes and cut infrastructure spending. Every other government was doing the opposite. As I said last week, if, this, if our state's economy 
have simply kept pace with Victoria's on that GSP measure, growth state um, product, we would have an economy that was $50 billion a year bigger, roughly the turnover of BHP Billiton. But more importantly, we'd have a government that received $2,400 million a year in increased revenue. $2,400 million a year in increased revenue that could be better leveraged to deliver the infrastructure and the services that a city the size and with the potential that Sydney has deserves. So the Liberal Nationals welcome your proposals. Uh, many we will study further, but today I want to demonstrate how we've already announced policies that reflect uh, uh, the big ideas. In relation to the Commission of Audit, uh, we're in heat of the agreement. We announced a Commission of Audit uh, in August of last year to open the books and get to the truth about uh, the state's finances, asset management and performance. I want a Commission of Audit this time that doesn't just look forward, but looks back. As someone who studied history, I genuinely believe that unless you learn the lessons, you're bound to repeat them. And I want to know where that $12 billion in extra revenue went, so that should we return to those periods, no one will ever again make the mistakes that this administration has. Our Commission of Audit will report uh, on the state of the New South Wales balance sheet, the sustainability of its budget position, weaknesses in financial controls and financial risk management, wasted expenditure, infra infrastructure cost overruns, and on measures to drive better performance through increased accountability and transparency in financial uh, reporting. And it will identify opportunities for contestability. We understand that growing New South Wales requires a disciplined focus on the performance of state government enterprises and programs. And we've already indicated a vastly different approach in this area than Labor. We believe that where there's a better way of delivering government services or programs which maintain or exceed appropriate standards, delivers better results and defends public value, government is morally and economically obliged to consider it. We don't believe that good ideas are only found in the public sector. We acknowledge the innovation the private and non-government sectors have demonstrated in how to better deliver services to families, often for improved value. We understand it and are committed to the benefits that competition produces. And as you know in your own businesses, the competition does um, uh, provide a force to improve quality and increase value for money. And we recognise that there are many individuals, innovative, highly motivated people, in non-government sectors and the private sector, who have as genuine an interest in raising the standards of government services is anyone in either the political sphere or in the public sector. I recognise that running New South Wales is a team effort. It can never be about one person. And the New South Wales Liberals and Nationals understand that as, as we seek to make New South Wales number one again, we need to tap into the skills and the talents that are available across the length and the breadth of this state. Whether in rooms like this, whether in the non-government sector, or whether in rural, rusty and, uh, and dusty uh, country areas of this state, we need to tap in and partner with people across this state to ensure that we are number one again. Secondly, in relation to uh, uh, creating jobs through uh, becoming more competitive around tax and regulation and the GST, we absolutely understand uh, and support business in wanting to reduce the cost of doing business and in reducing the tax on jobs. It's why, as I said before, we propose payroll tax initiatives as an example of what we would have done uh, through the global financial crisis. Making New South Wales more competitive a place to do business, making New South Wales, in fact, uh, uh, the best place in Australia to invest and do business, uh, was one of the goals that we set ourselves uh, in October 2008 in the economic framework document handed down by uh, our Shadow Treasurer, Mike Baird, and the Shadow Finance Minister, uh, Greg Pearce. Uh, we want to do more, and we'll be saying more about state taxes and regulations in the coming weeks and months.